1798, the land that you will be exploring today was part of a large parcel that was divided between two brothers, William Black and John Black. The original 16 squares that became the town of Blacksburg were laid out on land owned by William. John Black's land later became the core of Virginia Tech's campus. From 1798 until the mid-1900s, Tom's Creek Street, which is now Main Street, was filled with stores, hotels, banks, and residences. The area to the southeast of the municipal building was full of white-fenced houses, cows, and orchards. Proceed to Stop A. Across from the municipal building, at the corner of Washington Street and Draper Road, the Five Chimneys House is an excellent example of an early residential structure. The house was built in 1852 by physician and merchant John R. Phillips. It featured five large rooms, each with its own fireplace and chimney. The distinctive Queen Anne porch was added 30 to 50 years after the original construction of the home. A VPI horticulture professor, A.G. Smith, made major changes to the home in the 1930s, including reopening the fireplaces and enclosing the porch on the back of the home. Smith is also credited with the extensive landscaping that surrounds the property. There's a local legend that a prominent local lumber dealer and treasurer of the Blacksburg Presbyterian Church buried a large sum of money near the house sometime between 1892 and 1918. When the legend began circulating, many searched for the treasure, but none has ever been found. Acquired by the town of Blacksburg in 1987, Five Chimneys now houses the Community Relations Office and WTOB Channel 2, the town's community access television station. Proceed to Stop B. Blacksburg was never on a main railroad, but in 1854, Cambria became a stop on the Virginia-Tennessee Railroad. A narrow, winding road led from Cambria to Blacksburg until 1904, when the railroad from Cambria to Blacksburg was built. This rail spur line was called the Huckleberry, named for the abundance of native berries that grew along the tracks. The first depot in Blacksburg was a simple wooden structure located on the current site of the library. Notice that the architecture of the library is reminiscent of a train depot. The second depot was located on the site of the municipal building and served as the main entry point to the town for students and visitors for many years. Trains would arrive at this depot, stop to unload passengers, and then the train would back up for the entire return trip to Cambria. When the university was built, power plants were needed to supply the area. The drop-off point of the coal for these plants was across Draper Road, where a trestle allowed rail cars to drop coal onto trucks on the road below for delivery to the power plant on campus. The section of railroad between Blacksburg and what is now the New River Valley Mall in Christiansburg is a walking, biking path known as the Huckleberry Trail. Proceed to Stop C. In 1921, the Hevener brothers built a Chevrolet dealership located adjacent to the train depot. This was the first automobile dealership in the town, and their business continued for over 50 years. When the Hevener brothers sold the dealership, Doc Roberts took over the building for his tire and auto repair business, which operated for another 40 years. In 2009, the town of Blacksburg rehabilitated the building for use as municipal office space and for town meetings. The architectural style is Art Deco and features terrazzo floors and tin ceilings. The building burned in 1933, but was quickly rebuilt with an addition to the original building. 
While walking to the next stop on the map, notice the small stream on the right, D1, next to the Main Street Inn. On your tour, this stream will be visible in several locations. The town is making a concerted effort to daylight this stream wherever possible. After the town stopped taking its drinking water from this stream, the water became a nuisance rather than a resource, and so it was covered by buildings, sidewalks, and roads. Proceed to Stop D. On your right, you'll see a brick restaurant called Cabo Fish Taco. This building was built in 1847 as the Presbyterian Church and cost $1,500 to build. It is the oldest building surviving on this street. Originally, there were two doors, one for women and the other for men. The Presbyterian congregation initially shared this meeting place with the Methodist. Proceed to Stop E. There are several T intersections that exist in the original 16 squares of Blacksburg. This helps provide a sense of the size of the town at its beginning. If you look down Church Street, you will notice that in either direction there are T intersections where the road ends. At one end, the old Blacksburg Middle School is visible. At the other end is Old Town Hall. Church Street is situated in the middle of the town and was possibly intended to be the main street of Blacksburg. In the 1800s, this street would have been a mix of residences, hotels, and stores, as well as college student housing. The southwestern end of Lee Street also ends at a T intersection, and again, a building faces the intersection. There are nine examples of T intersection within the original 16 blocks of the town, and many of them terminate at a building. Even Main Street used to end in a T intersection. One of the first buildings on the university campus was built in the middle of what is now Main Street, and Main Street curved around the building. The road pattern can still be seen where College Avenue crosses Main Street. The highest point of Church Street is the site of the Methodist Church. The majority of Blacksburg's early population was Methodist and Presbyterian. Blacksburg's first Methodist congregation was established in 1798. The earliest portion of this building was built in the early 1900s and has been added onto several times. The Methodist Church has beautiful stained glass memorial windows, one of which was dedicated to Dr. Harvey Black, a grandson of John Black and great-nephew of William Black. Harvey Black was the regimental surgeon for the 4th Regiment Stonewall Brigade during the Civil War and assisted Surgeon McGuire in amputating Stonewall Jackson's arm after the battle at Chancellorsville. Harvey Black's house was located on the lot that is now Backstreet's Restaurant. Proceed to Stop F. The abundance of water was one of the main reasons that this area was chosen by European settlers. There are many active springs in Blacksburg, such as the Town Spring, the Spout Spring, and the Keister Evans Spring. This creek begins at Spout Spring and feeds into Struble's Creek. Your tour will take you to the site of Spout Spring. The Tech Bookstore parking lot located on South Main Street is located over the Town Spring. The Town Spring was closed down between 1890 and 1891 due to a typhoid fever outbreak. It was reopened when a livery stable uphill from the spring was removed. By the 1940s, this spring was nothing but a weed patch. F1 Notice the sculpture along the fence on Penn Street that calls attention to the stream that runs across the back lot of this restored 1880 home. Proceed to Stop G. This house was built in the early 1800s. 
The Spout Spring House is one of the oldest houses still standing in the original 16 squares and was first owned by John Spickard. As a saddle maker tanning leather, Mr. Spickard needed a lot of water. He built his house close to Spout Spring, Blacksburg's main water supply. In the 1850s, there were more than two dozen artisans in the town. All of these artisans would have relied on water for their livelihood, and the water would have been transported from this spring. Notice the small log structure located behind the main house. This was a meat house, which cured meat with salt rather than the more prevalent smokehouse. Proceed to Stop H. Spout Spring lies at the easternmost corner of the 16 squares. The ruin of the spring house is hidden by a grove of trees. The stone foundation of the spring still overflows with the spring water, which bubbles out of the ground. When the town was founded, the spring was an adequate water supply. But as the town grew and the university was built, the demand for water increased. In the late 1930s, problems such as a typhoid outbreak and other diseases occurred, prompting the town of Blacksburg to join Christiansburg and Virginia Tech to form a water authority. The authority began to draw water from the New River in the early 1950s. Proceed to Stop I. First Baptist Church was organized in the early 1800s and purchased this site in 1874. The congregation continues to be an active part of our community. The church building was the center of an African-American community, which included a nightclub called the Moon Glow, several houses, and the Blacksburg Negro School, which was located across Clay Street on the property that is now the old Blacksburg Middle School. Proceed to Stop J. The house at 201 Horton Street was built in 1871. It's a two-story house with a central gabled porch covered with fish scale shingles. This is another example of more elaborate architectural design during this time period. Proceed to Stop K. The intersection at Lee Street and Wharton Street is the highest point within the original 16 squares. This intersection can be seen from Main Street. Imagine having to carry buckets of water up from the springs that are at least two blocks away from this point. Proceed to Stop L. The Price House was built on the northeast edge of the original 16 blocks. In the oldest portion of the house, faces Horton Street. The two-story log and frame house was built in the 1840s by James Kent and was valued at $300. In the 1870s, Thomas Nelson Conrad, a former president of the university, lived in the home. Conrad had served in the Civil War as a Confederate spy and planned an unfulfilled attempt to kidnap Abraham Lincoln. He wrote about his war experience in a book entitled A Confederate Spy, A Story of the Civil War, which is available in local libraries. The house was given to the town after Nelson Price, another longtime resident of the house, died in 1985. Nelson Price planted a large iris garden on the property, and the town maintains that garden for citizens to enjoy each spring. Proceed to Stop M. Roanoke Street eventually became a major road, as evidenced by the larger early 20th century homes that line the road. This period of time correlates to a period of growth for the town and the university. This road used to merge with the Fencastle Turnpike, what is now Harding Avenue, and was the main road to Salem and Fencastle following the Roanoke River Valley. Proceed to Stop N. Horton Street is the northeastern boundary of the original 16 squares, and its intersection with Jackson Street is the northernmost corner. The houses on three of the corners of this block are early log cabins dating to the early 1800s. 
If you study the features of these buildings, you'll be able to pick out the narrow, two-story original structures within their outer shells of modern siding and additions. The Croy Dawson House is one of the three log cabins on this block and was owned by the same family for nearly 160 years. The home was a wedding gift to its first owners, William and Rosanna Croy Dawson in 1840. The boxwoods on the property are said to have been transplanted from Mount Vernon, the home of George Washington. Diagonally opposite the Croy Dawson House, on the east corner of Roanoke and Wharton Streets, is the Martin Richardson House built in the 1860s. Notice the dramatic difference in the architecture of these two homes built just 20 years apart. Proceed to Stop O. In the 1800s, the Croy family owned many lots on the blocks between Jackson and Lee Streets. The Croy family ran businesses within these blocks, which were self-sustaining, making this area seem like a town within a town. The Andy Croy House at 103 South Penn Street, now called the Smith Montgomery House, was built in the 1840s across Penn Street from where it now stands. Dr. Phillips bought the home and had it dismantled down to the floor. The numbered logs were rolled across the street and reassembled with an L-shaped addition. The exact date of relocation and why the house was moved are not known. Proceed to Stop P. During the westward expansion, African Americans were brought to Blacksburg as slaves of the Europeans. A few of the large surrounding plantations like Whitethorn, Kentland, and Smithfield had numerous slaves. For the most part, slaves were forbidden from gathering in private, including in churches. Despite that ban, St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church began in 1857, eight years before slaves were freed in the Civil War. This building was constructed in 1901. The congregation of this church is still an active part of this community. Proceed to Stop Q. The Andy Camper House is at the corner of Jackson and Penn Streets. Down the street, on the corner of Jackson and Wharton, is the Spencer Jackson House. These are the other corner log cabins on the northernmost block of the 16 squares. Each of the 16 squares was divided into four building lots. The first houses were built on the street corner of the lot with the interior space of the squares used for livestock and gardens. As space was needed for more houses, they began to fill the interior spaces with more structures. The mustard-colored house between the Andy Camper House and the AME Church is the Purdue House built in 1925. This is an example of the infill of space within a square. Proceed to Stop R. There were several other homes similar to those that remain on the northwest side of Jackson Street, which were torn down when the fire station was built. Like the community on Clay Street, the AME Church was the center of an African-American community that lined Jackson Street. It's important to recognize that these communities were strong despite the racial inequality they faced, and they contributed significantly to the growth of Blacksburg. Proceed to Stop S. The Old Town Hall building was built in the 1920s as a general store and housed all of the town government offices prior to the 1960s. The site of the Old Town Hall is where William Black's log house stood from the 1780s until the 1800s. William donated the 16 squares property, a total of 37 acres, to form the town of Blacksburg, which he named after himself. He petitioned the Virginia legislature to incorporate the town in 1798. Proceed to Stop T. The fourth oldest denomination in Blacksburg is the Episcopal Church, originating in 1857. This stone building was built in 1879 and is the first use in Blacksburg 
of locally quarried gray limestone, now referred to as hokey stone. A New York architect designed the church, and the design is symbolic of Blacksburg's shift from a local market town to the sophisticated architecture of the late 1800s. As you can see from the photographs, this building has significant additions to the original structure. Proceed to stop you. In 1852, 17 charter members started a Baptist church. Throughout their history, they built several churches, including three different structures on this site at the intersection of Roanoke and Church Street. This current building was built in 1903 and is now used as the Jewish Community Center. The Baptist also constructed a building at the corner of Roanoke and Draper Streets in 1940. They sold that building to the Church of God in 1953, but the structure was completely destroyed by fire in 1958 and was later replaced by a modern store of much less architectural significance. Proceed to Stop V. The building that the Blacksburg First Church of God purchased after their fire was originally built in 1902 as the third structure for the Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. The structure contains magnificent Tiffany stained glass windows. Proceed to Stop W. The section of Main Street between Roanoke Street and College Avenue has many buildings that date to the late 1800s and has always been a main conduit of activity between the town and the university. There are many early photographs of this section of Main Street. The intersection of Main Street and College Avenue used to feature the Alumni Gate, which was the main entrance to the VPI campus. In the mid-1800s, many in the community thought there should be a boys' school to complement the Blacksburg Female Academy. To fill that need, the Methodists bought about five acres of land for $650, just southwest of the present entrance to the Virginia Tech Mall, and they built a school building. The Olin and Preston Institute opened in 1851, but by 1858 the school was struggling financially. The property went to a creditor and remained open, but was forced to close during the Civil War. In 1869, the Olin and Preston Institute reopened under the name Preston and Olin Institute. In 1872, to ease financial problems at the Preston and Olin Institute, the trustees asked Reverend Peter Wisner and Dr. Harvey Black to submit a proposal to the State General Assembly to use Virginia's share of federal land-grant money to open a College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts in Blacksburg. The University of Virginia and the College of William and Mary were not interested in the agricultural focus of the land-grant university, so they did not adequately compete for the funding. Blacksburg leaders gave up the Preston and Olin name, donated land to the college, along with $20,000 of county money, and thereby established a new college in Blacksburg called Virginia Agricultural and Mechanical. In 1896, after considerable growth, the name was changed to the Virginia Agricultural and Mechanical College and Polytechnic Institute. In 1944, it became Virginia Polytechnic Institute, and finally, in 1970, it became the Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. Currently, 90 countries are represented by the students enrolled at the college. Proceed to Stop X. The Armory Building was built as a Federal Works Progress Administration, or WPA, project in 1936 with additional money from the town and the state. In addition to its function as an armory, the structure was used as a supplemental building to the high school located behind the armory. Located beside today's armory, is the 1930s grammar school for whites. This land had been the site of the first recognized female academy in Montgomery County, Blacksburg Female Academy, built in the early 1840s. The structure is now used as Virginia Tech's media building. 
Blacksburg's first high school no longer exists. Behind the armory is Blacksburg's second high school building, which was built in 1916 for $10,000. The building now houses the architecture annex at Virginia Tech. Proceed to stop Y. The Thomas Connor House was built on Draper Road in 1878 by William Howard Thomas. Notice the semicircular arches above the windows and the detailed work of the cornice and trim indicative of the owner's wealth. The house is situated at the end of a T intersection and the town spring is right across the street. This house is owned by the town of Blacksburg and is leased to Virginia Tech for office space. Proceed to stop Z. Next to the Thomas Connor House now stands the Alexander Black House, built in 1897 by Alexander Black, a descendant of John Black, brother of William Black, who was the founder of Blacksburg. This house originally stood on Main Street on the current site of Kent Square. After Alexander Black died in 1935, the house served as a boarding house for a while. Many local residents remember the structure as the former McCoy Funeral Home. In December 2002, the town purchased and moved the house from its original location on Main Street to its current location on Draper Road to save the house from demolition. The town plans to restore the Alexander Black House to house the Blacksburg Museum. This completes the walking tour of the town of Blacksburg's original 16 squares. We hope you've enjoyed learning about the history of the town and its early residents, and that you'll recognize the importance of these visual clues of our past and how they each help to make Blacksburg a special place. <music>